Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy, and today I want to show you how you can use Blend If to blend two photographs together and make a really cool looking effect. I've done a lot of tutorials of Blend If, but I've never shown it used in a creative way like this. So here's our image, a barn in the Palouse. We're going to make it look like it was painted on an old building and that paint started to chip and rot away, and it's on this texture. So before we begin, if you haven't subscribed yet, I highly suggest you do so because great content comes out all the time. Let's go and hop into the tutorial and I'll show you how all this stuff works. So at this point, I've done a lot of tutorials on how uh, Blend If can change your workflow. I've shown the basics of Blend If. I've shown uh, how noise reduction and sharpening can be used better with Blend If. I've shown how to texture photos with Blend If, vignettes. One of my most popular videos on YouTube is called Five Ways Blend If Will Blow Your Mind. And literally, that's how I feel about Blend If. But one of the things I haven't shown is how to blend two different photos uh, like you see here. So a texture of sorts like this with an image of a barn like this. So what I want to show you is how you can take this image of this barn and apply it right to this texture as if it looks like the picture of the barn is peeling off of the texture. So we have to do a couple things with this texture first before we start. So what I want to do is I want to make a really high contrast version of this image. I could use curves to do it, but I think one of the best ways for me to do this is to actually use Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. So I'm going to press Control Shift A and open this texture up in Adobe Camera Raw as a filter. Now I want a higher contrast, meaning I want a little bit more dark in between all of the uh, bands of where the paint is peeling. And I want the paint itself to be a little bit more white. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to boost up those highlights and those uh, and the paint itself there. Let me boost up my whites a little bit, and then I'll just drop my shadows down. I could even boost my contrast up a bit more to even introduce even more contrast. And one of the other things I can do here is just drop the saturation all the way down. So it's almost like a black and white photograph. So it helps me see if I have pure white here, because this is going to help us when we start to blend. It does. I don't necessarily want pure white because I do want some of the texture of the paint to come through, but I also want my image to lay on it really nicely in those white areas. So I'm going to boost this up just a little bit more and that'll work. Now, these settings won't necessarily work for every photograph that you're going to do this with, but it works really well for this one. So I'm just going to press OK. So just know that when you're trying to apply these if it's in color try to put it in black and white and then uh, see if you can make a more high contrast version of that texture so now i'm going to grab this texture press v and move it right on top of my other image because the texture is smaller than the photograph i'm going to need to press command or control t and then if i press shift and alt and grab in this corner i'll just make this the size of the image in the background all right, so the shift and alt and click on one of those corners and it will expand that image from the center out to the edges and I'll press OK. So now I'm going to double click right back here where it says background. Just open that up so it's not a locked layer and move this right above here. Now we're ready to do our blend if we have the image that we want to put on top of the other image on top of it. So if I unclick this, you see the texture and now here's the photo. So I'm going to double click right here to get into those blend if principles. If you haven't seen the original blend if video that I did, uh, it's a very good one because it really shows the inner workings of how blend if works. I also go over it quite a bit in that five ways blend if will blow your mind video. So what I want to do here is I want the underlying black layers to be protected from this layer. So what I want to do is go down to where it says underlying layer. If I move this over, that's going to make the black shine through the image that I'm working on. So I'll go to about right here till I start to see everything kind of coming through nice and crispy. Once I start to get like a haloing type of edge like this, if I press control and space bar, I can zoom in. I don't really want that that crispy little white edge there. So I'll move this back until that crispy edge goes away and then press alt or option and split this so it feathers it nice and neat. All right, and then I'll press that control and space bar to zoom out here real quick. And everything almost looks really good right now. So I've allowed that underlying layers black stuff to shine through this photograph. Now I need to slightly blend a little bit of the whites of the underlying layer through the image. So notice how I said in the beginning of this, I don't want to go too high contrast because if I go too high contrast, I'm going to miss some of that midtone area that I do kind of want to shine through this image on that peeling paint. So I'll move this white layer over so that some of the white stuff starts to peek through and then I'll press alt or option and split this on over and I can go ahead and just move this over now until some more of that 
peeling paint starts to kind of show through a little bit. And from here, you can pretty much just move around these adjustments until you get exactly where you want it to be. We can also address the layer that we have on top and show how that can kind of have some of the protection measures of it kind of fade away a little bit to show some of this underneath. So if I go over here, I'm basically going to take all of the white parts on the top layer and start to blend it with the bottom layer. So if I move this over, it happens really fast. But if you press that alter option and you split it on over, it's a nice seamless transition. So we start to really see some of the uh, better whites come through underneath. And we can do the same thing down here. If we press alt or option on the blacks, we can see if we like that. I don't really like the way that looks though. So I'm just gonna move that back. So at this point, I'm pretty excited with the way this looks. It, it almost looks as if someone painted our image on top of a wall and then old age started to peek through and climb through this image. So as I've shown in the past, I've shown many tutorials on how to use Blend If in more technical ways. This is a way to use Blend If in a more creative way to allow your creative mind to play around with two different images. It works really well with old images like this, rustic images of barns and such, and especially with textures that have this type of uh, painted feel to it. If you'd like to download this texture, just click the link right here that will take you over to F64 Academy if you're on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube and you're on F64 Academy, just click the link above this video and that will take you to the page where you can download this texture. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and the soon to be released F64 Elite. All right, so if you like this tutorial, please like it, comment on it, share it, tell a friend and definitely subscribe because if you're not subscribed, you're going to miss out on cool content like this as I put it out. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.